Good morning everyone. Today I'm going to speak on the poem London. This is a very famous poem by William Black in which he criticizes the church, the politics and the contemporary situations in his time. This is the poet William Blake. Now let me tell you about the poet. William Black was born in London. He is a famous English poet. He is appreciated for his creativity, realistic projection of human suffering, human life and his faith in equality. This poet talked about the common man and his suffering and he was a critic of orthodox religions and its systems and the exploitative capitalist trend and the political domain in which the people believed in exploitation. He thought that the religious system of the day was corrupt. The political system too was very selfish and whatever people suffered in those days that suffering was caused by the orthodox religions, the church and its system and the political will. This great poet believed in French and American revolutions. He rejected a literary tradition. He developed new mythology and he had deep understanding of the human psyche. He explored the human mind and he talked about the agonies, the pains, the plight the people suffered in their lives. It is due to his rejection of the literary tradition and his substantial contribution in poetry. He is called one of the first romantic poets in English literature. The prominent themes that we notice that we find in his poetry are the beauty of nature and the innocence of children. His notable works include Political Sketches, Songs of Innocence, Songs of Experience and Jerusalem. His, some of his well-known poems are The Tiger, The Chimney Sweeper, The Lamb, A Poison Tree, The Sick Rose, the Little Black Boy, A Cradle Song, Infant Sorrow, and The Garden of Love. In most of his poems, we prominently find two themes. One is the beauty of nature and the second is the innocence of childhood. In his poem, The Chimney Sweeper, he talks about the problem of the child labor prevailing in the late 18th and 19th century in England. He talks about the poor children who were sold in charity. And once they were sold in charity, the church did not pay attention to the suffering of these people, even the politicians of the day. They had nothing to do with the problem of the children. So this is what uh, the poet William Black talks about in The Chimney Sweeper. Now, let us begin our discussion. And before we begin this, let me tell you about the poem in brief. The poem, London, is a realistic depiction of the human pains agonies and sufferings. This poem comes from Songs of Experience. 
William Blake observes suffering everywhere and finds that the human beings are shattered, exploited, suppressed and oppressed at all the places in the capitalist society and they have no place to survive. He presents the bleak picture in the city of London. It portrays the exploitation of the labourer class. It talks about the plight of small children working at chimney sweepers and the miserable life of prostitutes, that how prostitutes are trapped in prostitution and how they are exploited in this system. He depicts how everything is controlled by the dominant class and this hegemony does nowhere feel sympathy for the poor, the women, the labor class and the harlots. He depicts how everything is controlled by the dominant class and this hegemony does nowhere feel sympathy for the poor, the labor class, the small children and the prostitutes. Yes, London is a social satire and it is a commentary on the failure of the human civilizations which have failed miserably in creating an egalitarian society that the poet believed. Let us begin the discussion. First, let me read the text of the poem and then we shall continue the discussion. London by William Blake I wander through each chartered street, near where the chartered Thames does flow, and mark in every face I meet marks of weakness, marks of awe. In every cry of every man, in every infant's cry of fear, in every vice, in every ban, the mind forged manacles I hear. How the chimney sweepers cry, every blackening church appalls, and the hapless soldier's sigh runs in blood down palace walls. But most through midnight streets I hear how the youthful harlot's curse blots the newborn infant's tear, and the lights with plagues the marriage hears. So let us uh, begin the discussion and let us see what the poet has to say in the first part of this poem. The poet is saying, I wander through each chartered street. Chartered means uh, that is controlled and restricted. So human beings are entitled to uh, the rights, but these rights are curtailed. So the poet is saying, that he wandered through the chartered street. Chartered street means everything is controlled here by the law. The people who are powerful in the political world. I wander through each chartered street near where the chartered thames does flow. So not only the streets are controlled but even the river is controlled. So here the poet is saying that the natural elements are even under human control. So nature is controlled by the dominant class. And mark in every face I meet marks of weakness, marks of O. So the poet is talking about that each street is controlled by the power the power of law and the people who has that power in their hands. The poet is saying that the entire city is affected by this law in which they don't have right to survive. They don't have right to claim freedom. And when he is wandering through the streets, he saw the people and he noticed that these people 
were exploited. These people were suppressed and oppressed. And as these people were suppressed and oppressed in the city, he saw, he noticed that they were in pain, they were in agony. And this agony is the result of the exploitation in the industrialist world. This agony is the result of the politicians who do nothing for the poor. This agony, this pain, this suffering is the result of the failure of the church to work for the people. So, William Black is very critical of the church because the church in his time was very corrupt. So, the point is saying when he wandered through the chartered street and the Thames River, the river that is even controlled by the human beings, he saw that people were sad, people were unhappy. So, this weakness he noticed and he himself experienced in his country. Let us move to the next part here. In every cry of every man, in every infant's cry of fear, in every vice, in every ban, the mind forged manacles I hear. The poet is saying when he wandered through the streets, he saw that people were in trouble. So he noticed their cry. He's saying that each child that was born in the country was under the grief of some fear. As they were born in poverty and there was no future ahead. Every vice, every human being that he found there, they were under the grief of suffering, pain, misery, trouble, as they were all exploited. In every ban, so there were restrictions imposed on these people. And these restrictions were imposed by the church. These restrictions were imposed by the royal people who ruled at that time in the country. And everything was controlled by the mind's forged manacles. I hear the poet is saying here that this is the power of the mind. This is the power of the authority, religion, church and its system that controlled everything. And even the people were under the control of this phenomena that prevailed in his time. How the chimney sweepers cry. Every blackening church appalls and the hapless soldier's sigh runs in blood down palace walls. Now here, the poet talks about the child labor. In his poem, The Chimney Sweeper, even he talks about the children. Now what is the problem of the children? That these orphan children, these charity children are sold into commercial bondage. They are sold for the commercial bondage. And when they are sold for the commercial bondage, the church, the politicians, the royal families did nowhere intervene in this matter. They accepted it. Now, the children who had to clean the suit suffered a lot. They were paid less money, they were poorly fed, they were exploited and when many of the children went to do the work of cleaning the suit, they had to climb high and as a result when they were unable to keep the balance while cleaning the suit, the dirt in the houses, in the churches, they fell down and some of them died. Some of them sustained injuries. Even some of uh, the children suffered from the horrible disease as they have to breathe in the air while working. And when they worked, they have to clean the sooth in the churches, in the houses of the people. They have to work in the dirt. So the poet is saying, 
that he saw that the children were crying they were exploited they were in trouble they were in pain they were full of agony and at such a time the black church the poet is saying here every blackening church appalls the church with black dogma of corruption the church was corrupted though it talked about morality it had no morality that is what the poet is saying it had imposed so many laws on the people so this black church with its black dogma that is becoming more black has nothing to do with these chimney sweepers they gave consent they sanctioned this tradition by the laws of which the small poor children were sold into this commercial bondage and from there their exploitation started and continue in uh, the poem the chimney sweeper william black talks about the dream that the small child who is working as a chimney sweeper had now what happens in the dream that his he and his colleagues he and his friends who are working as chimney sweepers they are set free they go to the river they take bath they enjoy the sing songs but suddenly the messenger of god comes yes and says if all do their duty they need not fear harm so the small innocent people the small innocent children are forced to believe in the idea of heaven and hell the small children are forced to believe the idea of god they are forced to believe that this is the will of the god and they ha- they must have to accept it so even in our country uh, we 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 have seen and we have read that the people who ruled the temples in this country they too imposed restrictions on the people they made the division of the society into the caste and sub castes and they instilled they imbibed the idea of the heaven and hell to such an extent that people started accepting it and the people were told if they all do their duty they need not fear harm means in whatever caste they were born and whatever work was allotted whatever occupation was allotted to that caste they were forced to continue it from generation to generation so this is how the caste system in india sustained so these people were forced to believe in the idea of god the heaven and the hell and the idea of salvation that even uh, the poet like ravinath tagore talks about in the poem live the chanting he says deliverance where is this deliverance can be found so deliverance means moksha it is freedom from the cycle of life birth death and rebirth so the poet ravinath tagore says that deliverance cannot be found anywhere so this idea this superstitious idea that the temples the church imbibe on the minds of the people ultimately results in uh, the people's exploitation and suffering so here the church has nothing to do with the problem of the children so the poet is talking about the problem of child labor prevailed in his time and the hapless soldiers sigh so when he wandered through the streets he saw how helpless the soldiers were how unfortunate their lives were that they had to fight as there was no option the soldiers were controlled by the royal people the royal families who were dominant who were in the power at the time so these soldiers for the bread and butter sacrifice their lives protect 
protecting the palace. So this palace is a symbol of the royal people. The way the Kshetriya protected the elite class in this country from the enemies. The way Vaishya and Shudra and Ati Shudra continued the traditions and continued their service in the name of religion, in the name of God and suffered endless. So here the poet is talking about the unfortunate situation in which the soldiers are trapped. The soldiers are controlled by the authority, the dominant powers of the day. And they have to sacrifice their lives to protect these palaces and the royal people. And these royal people have nothing to do with the soldiers. These royal people have nothing to do with the common people. Their interest was just to maintain the power, to maintain their hegemony and rule the people. So this is how uh, the poet is making use of striking imagery. The image of chimney sweepers cry, blackening church, hapless soldier runs in blood down palace walls. This striking imagery focuses how bleak, how unfortunate the things were at the time he lived. The use of striking imagery delves deeper into the psyche of common human beings. This explores the human mind, the common people and tells us about their pain, their problems, their miseries in this world of religion where religious people who dominate the religion have nothing to do with the poor people. Even today in our country, in this pandemic environment, you see the doors of the uh, temples are closed. Is the money that is donated to the temples, is it used to protect the people from COVID-19? Is that money used for medical facilities? Nowhere. Is that money used to solve the problem of child labor? Is that money used to start good infrastructure schools? No. So the poet is helpless to change the things. So we are. So when the poet is wandering th through the streets, he finds that people are shackled and chained. And they are shackled and chained by the power of mind. So this power of mind is the power of politicians, the royal families, kings and princes, the church, the priests and their systems. And this, this religion and their systems have nothing to do with the common people and their lives. In the last four lines, the poet talks about the problems of prostitutes. Let us see. But most through midnight streets I hear how the youthful harlots curse, blasts the newborn infant's tear, and blights with playing the marriage years. The poet is saying that when he wandered through the streets in London, he saw the cry of the young girls and these young girls were prostitutes. They were trapped in this prostitution and they were exploited. They were suppressed and oppressed in the system. And these prostitutes have to sell their bodies. So out of this physical relation, the children were born. So this curse resulted into the birth of children and the children were subjected to poverty. The children took birth in utter poverty. The children did not suffer only from poverty but also the contagious disease as these women 
who had sexual relations with men separate from the contagious disease like hiv and aids and ultimately the journey of life of the prostitutes who were exploited and the children who were born to them ultimately lead to death and blights with plagues the marriage years years is a carriage that comes to receive the dead body and takes it to the graveyard so this this union of the prostitutes with the men ultimately leads to death so marriage is the symbol of the union of two minds two bodies but here in the case of the prostitutes this union ultimately results into suffering pain agonies and death as you know that the prostitutes are not acceptable in society in any society they have to live quite a way from the so called respectable societies even today so in those days the poet is talking about uh, the worst conditions that these prostitutes suffered they were exploited they were marginalized they had no right and ultimately they had to meet the sad end and that was the death even one of the marathi poets a great writer babura pagul talks about the problems of the laborer class he talks about the problems of the people living in the slum and he talks about the problems of the prostitutes that how the young girls are trapped in prostitution and how they suffer endless even uh, the other ambedkarite poet namdev dasar talks about the problems the pains the miseries that the prostitutes experience and suffer in their lives so he talks about the problems of these women in golfita and he brings to the notice of the people that we have to change otherwise this entire system is going to collapse one or the other day so william blake is similarly uh, talking about the problems of the laborer class is talking about the child labor it is talking about inequality is talking about Uh, how human beings are exploited in this religious system in this industrialist system where there is no scope for growth development progress for these poor people and ultimately they die they take birth in poverty and they die in poverty so this is a bitter criticism of the society the society that fails miserably to create an egalitarian society where everyone believes freedom fraternity equality and they live happily uh these are uh, the questions that the students have to go through and write their answers uh, thank you very much